Oh, there's a collector on the corner. I, about eight months ago, there was a guy got a YouTube channel. And he helped a fellow mount a radio tar and tube on a Dodge wheel, split rim. And they got it mounted, and they got it aired up and all that. But they did a lot of things incorrectly. I guess it works. You can do what you want with your own stuff. But anyway, I've got this tilt-top trailer. And I bought it at the junkyard down there where they buy scrap metal and all that for $200. It's a frame and a top, no bed, no floor on the bed. And somebody had welded spindles on there that took them house trailer cars, them 14 fives. So every time I went to using that trailer, I had tar trouble. I went to Paragould Auction down there, and I bought a pickup bed with a stock rack on it. Nope, just a bed and a stock rack. I loaded on that trailer, and I was coming back, and I got down around Oak Grove. And a cop come behind me and said, you're throwing sparks. And I looked back there, and I had lost a rim and tar completely. It was just a hub there, and every once in a while it hit the ground, that, that cast iron hub would, or the house trailer hub, and make sparks. So I quit using that trailer. So I got on the internet there, and I got to look, and I found some place up in Illinois that had brand new six-hole hubs, bearings, studs, seals, a whole nine yards, $50 a corner. So I spent 200 and some odd dollars, taxes and shipping, and I got them hubs in here. And I was running six-hole, 15-inch Chevrolet wheels on there. But I wanted some heavier 16-inch cars. So I was at another auction, and I found four of these six-hole split rims with 14-ply cars on them. And I bought them, $200. No taxes, auction sale. And I brought them home, and I put them on that trailer, and I ran them a while. And one of them went down. Well, I got to looking at that one that went down. It was a radial. The other three on there are bias ply. So I beat that thing off the rim, took it off this wheel. And when I got it off, it didn't have no liner inside of it. Just a tube in the tar. You need a liner inside there. So what I did, I went up there a couple weeks ago. I went up there and I got this rim off an old truck I got back there. And I got this tar off of it. 16 inch fire fly. And I got this tube. And I'm going to put that together. Now the thing about it is, If you look inside this, this is off of a 20. But if you look inside this, it says radial. Yep. I Made in Guatemala. It. It's a 20. But it says radial right there. Yeah, radial. On the flap that was inside here wasn't too good. So I found a better flap I had in there. So it's a 16. Uh -huh. And it says tube side. And you look right there, 16, for Blias Ply Tires. Okay, for Blias. Blias Ply. Okay. Now. Okay. Is that a tube I got. Is it a bias tube? Got that long valve stem. 716. Uh-huh. Bias Light Truck Tube. Yeah. Warning, do not use in any radial tires. Oh, my goodness. That's why I'm revisiting this. That's why you're... A lot you're... of people want to put radial tires and tubes in here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have you a radial tube and a radial liner for the work. Mm -hmm. And what I did, instead of putting the tar on and trying to clean the rust off, I cleaned the rust off and painted that beforehand. a week ago. Beforehand. Mm -hmm. Cleaned it all up. Made it look party. And the only thing I got to do today is assemble this. Uh -huh. The first thing I'm going to do is take the vacuum cleaner. Mm. 
Wish you'd do that in the house. Clean that up pretty good. I might have a little too much air in Next thing I'm going to do is decide which side of this I want. You want me to puncture the tube so you can get a little of that air out? What? I said you want me to puncture the tube so I can get a little bit of oh, that air out. I'm not putting this power tube in here. I was going to help you out. I might have a little too much air. Yeah, I think you got too much air. Well, I think I got a little too much. Mm -hmm. I thought I had stage, well, that'd be about right. That's no big problem. It is, too. You can't get it in. Is that like the girdle? <laughs> Put that valve core through this hole right here. Yeah, I see it. Don't know if anyone else can, but I see the hole. pesky thing is in your way. <laughs> you got to work that around in there. Yeah, I know. It's like a girdle. You got to work that sucker in. Yep. It'll fit. I know it'll fit. It takes its time. It's made. It says it's made for a radial tire. It ain't radial. It's bike tire I'm <laughs> no, working on. I seen if you's paying attention. Okay. <laughs> okay, Miss Dibby. I don't think this liner's ever been in a tire yet. There's a brand new one there I had on the shelf. Wow. From 23 years ago when we was in, <laughs> oh my God. in the new and used tire business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new old stock, so that's why it's fighting you to the end. Yeah. It ain't had, it ain't been taking a set. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's got to take a set. Yeah, kind of. Oh, I didn't know that. Get all the wrinkles out of it. You better get all the wrinkles out okay. of it. Okay. Uh-huh. Hole right there. Yep, hole right there. Start out right there with your back corner. Uh-huh. Put the... Now, I could look back. Uh -huh. A lot of people do, uh -huh. but I ain't going to lube that because I don't want no moisture inside that tar. Uh -huh. It went on there without being lubed real easy. Uh -huh. now, I don't want anything in there that could cause that to rust. Uh -huh. And this ring's not bent, good shape. I should be able to get it on there real easy. Oh dear. I'm going to have a guitar too. I'll be right back. Do 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 do
Judy. Hey, we're not in the elevator. Just listen to the sounds of the trucks going by. Here he comes. He's back. Deep flange. A deep flange. Deep flange, yeah. Okay. What does a deep flange do? Make you curse? Well, you just lost well, it all. It may want to give me a little difficulty, Ben, but I'm showing out here going to do a video. Well, I, it's like a woman. You get it down a little more solid. That's what I was thinking. Maybe women are cantankerous too. Especially me. I know that'll go on or easier than that. You want me to That's the first time I ever fixed this particular wheel. <laughs> or any of them. Like that. Off that trailer. Well, looks to me like you need to get rid of the trailer if that's how much trouble it is. <laughs> Where's it going? Oh, I know, but I'm just laughing. It's my job to laugh. <laughs> I know. It. It's Debbie's job to laugh, y'all. <laughs> Well, my ideal of helping is just be throwing it over in the tar pile and forget it. <laughs> there it goes. Oh, there it goes. It just needed me to okay, make, if you'll notice, make fun that of it. That seated pretty good already. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Now all I got to do is take it over. Uh-huh. Use my clip-on air chuck. Clip-on air Cost chuck. you a couple bucks for these. Don't never air one of these suckers up. Even if you got in a cage, put your hand on it. Get away from it. That's right. Put that on there. Put that hose on there and that regulator. Mm -hmm. And air it up. And then let the air back out of it again. Mm -hmm. And what that letting the air completely out of it again does... It lets that tube settle down and move around in there. Mm -hmm. And that liner and all of it gets there and then you air it up again. That way if you've got it folded or pinched or anything in there, it's got a chance to live. Yeah. But anyway, I prefer a bias ply tar on my uh, trailers. A trailer will back up better. It'll turn better. When you've got a tandem axle trailer, and you cut sharp with radial tires. If you're cutting this way, you're dragging that front tire, the sidewall under it. And the back tire, you're dragging the back side of the sidewall under that tire. You're dragging your sidewalls around. If you're loaded heavy on gravel, you're bruising that sidewall on that radial. Whereas a bias ply will stand up and just scoot the tread around. Mm -hmm. But you, a bias ply on a trailer is easier to back up. It'll follow you better down the road mm -hmm. because... You don't need traction on a trailer tar to follow the road and everything, you know, to, for handling. It'll handle it. It's going to follow that truck. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's pretty much it on the deal. I'm going to air this up. Put about 60 pound of air in it. It's eight ply tar. That 14 ply 16 that was on this rim without a Without a liner, the tube wasn't no good anyway. It's on the back of my pickup right now. The 750 1614 ply rated. Ah. It's 107 pound tar. And I had another one, so I mounted two of them up on the back of my pickup. So when I go to auctions, I can load it down in them back tars 
ain't gonna swallow springs and rear end or something else gonna give up for them tars do uh, hopefully <laughs> are but the, anyway are the track <laughs> this is gonna be just a little short video but mm -hmm. yeah like that there it's hard to get that off that rim mm -hmm. and yeah i could take a grinder and all that stuff and cut it off but then i wouldn't have been able to use the tar I'd ruin the tar. If you want to save tar, you're going to have to get tar spoons and work it off there. And, that's you know, right. Even I know that's that. That's a drop center rim. You can push it way down get that bead to drop I in used that to center. Watch my daddy take tar side up. Off. You can get that off there once you get it broke down pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I believe that well, this will be a successful tar fix. It's already getting hot. Me and Debbie. <laughs> Being cooked. Uh, are you being cooked? <laughs> I am. I'm already good. Well, well you done been working up a sweat. But anyway. I just been standing here. It seems like that's a continual deal with me. I got so much stuff around here rolls on tars. I'm constantly fixing tars. I can haul the tars out of here and get this thing down and turn around and look and it's filled back up again with do you want Discarded me to do you want me to help you? What? You want me to help you? Well, you'd lie on par. That's right. Oh. I can get rid of that mess for you. Fire probably will be down here in five minutes seeing that tar kill. Well, I just tell them I was over here smoking and accidentally dropped a cigarette and oh, gas. Yeah. yeah, you smoke all right. <laughs> and here's something that's kind of rare you don't see very often. That's a six hole. GM wheel, and that's what they call an artillery wheel. Oh, wow. I like the little doohickey holes all the way Well, around. that old boy of mine's got a trailer he got somewhere, had them on it. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to put tubeless tires on it. Them don't hold tubeless very good. And I had some of these 60 through 66 Chevrolet six hole wheels. And mm -hmm. So he wanted we to did even up trade. He brought me more artillery wheels. I just like the looks of them. <laughs> so do I. Put them on the fence or something. Anyway, well, there, there's that's no all. room on the fence. You got it covered with bicycles. Maybe you can hang it from the power lines. Last time I looked, I had 639 subscribers. Yeah. I'd really like to get to 1,000 someday. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. It's We've been doing this about a year, and we're having fun doing it. And we're gonna keep yes. doing it if we never get to a thousand yeah, subscribers. Yeah, it's, it's fun. But I, everybody that's subscribed, everybody that comments and stuff, I really appreciate it. Yes, so do it, I. Thank it, you. I mean, they be appreciated. It kind of keeps us motivated just a little <laughs> bit. But anyway, and if you want to see something, just comment and tell yeah, us. You, know, you, you got a question you want to ask or? You want to tell me what I'm doing wrong? Well, that's yeah. fine, too, because, you know, if there's a better way to do something, I want to learn it. I learn something every day. I watch videos on the Internet, and I learn stuff all the time. Uh, just recently, I was working on some one-cylinder motors. And, of course, you got to pull the flywheel off and fiddle with the points and put the flywheel on, hope you make it spark. And I found out I could pull that flywheel and electron ignition off a different engine, type Briggs engine, and put on my old Briggs engine. And if it don't make spark, it's because the polarity's mixed on the flywheel and you got to turn the coil around backwards and bolt it on, and then the polarity be going the right way and it'll work. Sometimes you can use the original flywheel, and sometimes you got to use a fly, later model flywheel. Mm -hmm. But I, I've learned all that about that, the different stuff. You know, as old as I am, I can still learn something every day from somebody else, you know. Uh, you don't ever want to be but so smart. But not from his wife. You want you all don't ever want to be so smart that you can't learn something from somebody you think is dumber than you are. <laughs> anyway, with that, we'll say goodbye and good luck to you. That'll be that all for this one. Uh, thank you all for watching, and please like and subscribe and comment below. Bye!